it's time for Mass with Mr. Thomas. Hey, hey, here we go, chapter four, lesson number five. We're still looking at differential equations, yeah, but we are now moving on to look at first order differential equations. So, so far in this chapter, we have been separating the variable in order to solve differential equations. Take a few seconds, try and separate the variable of this. I imagine you just found that you could not do that, and sometimes that is the case. And if that is the case, what you need to do is you need to find another method to fit, get back to your general solution. So this here, because it is a differential equation with a first derivative, it is known as a first order linear differential equation. And first order linear differential equations are of the form dy by dx plus something y equals something. The bit in front of y we know as p of x, and on the right hand side, whatever's there, we call q of x. So to get back to your general solution to find that, what we need to do first of all is get what's known as your integrating factor. And the integrating factor is e to the power of the integral of p of x. Remember, p of x is whatever is in front of y. So we integrate that and it's e to the power of that. That is your integrating factor. What we then do is to get the general solution, well that's given by the integrating factor times y equals the integral of the integrating factor times q of x, integrated with respect to x. And remember, q of x is whatever is on the right hand side. However, well, if you get one of these questions, you need to make sure it starts off with dy by dx. If you have x dy by dx, well, you'd have to divide everything by x. You need just dy by dx on its own. So, to find the general solution, here are the steps. Step one, you need to write the equation in the form dy by dx plus something y equals something. In front of y, we call that p of x, and on the end, we call that q of x. We will write down what p of x and q of x are. We need to use these in order to get the integrating factor and then the general solution. So once we write down p of x and q of x, we can use p of x to get the integrating factor. Remember, the integrating factor is e to the power of the integral of p of x. And once we know that, we can sub that into this here. Integrating factor times y equals the integral of the integrating factor times q of x, just whatever's on the end here, and we would integrate them. So step five, we integrate, and then after that, well, we can easily get to y equals, and that will give us the general solution. So let's try an example. Example one, find the general solution of the differential equation dy by dx plus y equals six e to the power of 2x. The first thing that we notice is the equation starts off with dy by dx as a first order differential equation. There's nothing in front of dy by dx. We don't have to rearrange it. So the first thing we can do, as it says here with the steps, we can get p of x and q of x. So p of x is whatever we are multiplying y by. What are we multiplying y by here? Yeah, it's just one. It's one y, so it would just be one. And q of x, what's q of x gonna be? Brilliant. That's just the right hand side, so that will be 6e to the power of 2x. After that, the integrating factor, so ix equals e to the power of p of x, so integrated, and we would then have e to the power of the integral of 1. So if you integrate 1 with respect to x, you get x, so our integrating factor is just e to the power of x. Our general solution, this is how we find the general solution, so it's the integrating factor times y. The integrating factor is e to the power of x. So up here, this will become e to the power of x times y. That will be equal to the integral of the integrating factor, well that's still e to the power of x, and we're multiplying that by q of x, and q of x is 6e to the power of 2x. From there then, well, we can simplify this right-hand side. We've got e to the x times 6e to the power of 2x. Notice here we're multiplying. It's the same base, e to the something, e to the something. So we add the indices. So that will become the integral of 6e to the power of 3x. From there, if you integrate 6e to the power of 3x, well, the 6 will stay as it is. e to the power of 3x will stay as it is. But you need to divide by the derivative of the index. Differentiate 3x and you get 3, so we divide by 3 or multiply by 1 third. And on the end, we obviously have the C. Well done. 
From there, six times one third will give us two, so we'd have two e to the power of three x plus c. That is therefore e to the power of x times y equals this right hand side. But to get down to y equals, we need to divide by e to the power of x. So dividing the left hand side by e to the power of x will give us y. And on the right hand side, if we divide the two e to the power of three x by e to the power of x, well, when we're dividing, it's the same base, so we can subtract the indices. So three x take away x will give us two e to the power of two x plus and see if we're dividing it by e to the power of x, it will still be a constant, but because we're dividing it by something in terms of x, we will have to write that down. So we've got c, and we're dividing it by e to the power of x. And that there is your general solution. Yeah. Example two, find the general solution of the differential equation dy by dx plus y over x equals x. Once again, we are following these steps. We need to write the equation in the form dy by dx plus something y equals something. Well, here we've more or less got that. We've got the dy by dx, but you may wish to rewrite this here. We've got y over x. If you take the y to the side, you could think about that as one over x times y. You may wish to do that, it may make it slightly easier. From there it is dead easy to identify p of x and q of x. So to here p of x is going to be, brilliant, p of x is just 1 over x, and q of x, what would you get for that to here? Brilliant, you would just get x. Good. So p of x is whatever is in front of y, and q of x is whatever is on the right hand side. We know from there we are solving this first order differential equation, so we get the integrating factor. And we can see that the integrating factor is e to the power of the integral of p of x. So it's e to the integral of p of x, which is e to the integral of 1 over x. To integrate 1 over x, what would that become if you integrate it? Good, 1 over x becomes ln x, so you'd have e to the power of ln x. And can you simplify that any further? Keris, help us out. X. Brilliant, that would just become x. Fantastic. The general solution then, you can find that using the integrating factor times y equals the integral of the integrating factor times q of x. So, subbing them in here, the integrating factor is x, so we'd have x times y equals the integral of the integrating factor times q of x. Integrating factor again is just x, and q of x is also x, so we'd have x times x and we'll integrate them with respect to x. From there, x times x, well that's x squared, so we're going to be integrating x squared, and that's dead easy. Uh, add one to the power, divide by the power, so that'll give you one third, x to the power of three, plus c, and from there to get y in its own, we're dividing by x, so a third x cubed divided by x will give us a third x squared, and c if you divide it by x, will give you c over x, and that there, is your general solution. Let's try another one. Example three, find the general solution of the differential equation. x dy by dx take away 2y equals x cubed sine x. So the first thing we need to do with this is we need to make sure the equation is written in the form dy by dx plus something y equals something. You notice here that we don't have dy by dx on its own, we also have this x. So the first step is to divide every term by x. So if we're dividing by x, that will give us dy by dx. If we divide the 2y by x, it will give us 2y over x. And if we divide the right hand side by x, then we will end up with x squared sine x. After that, well, you could just go into identifying p of x and q of x, but you may wish to rewrite this. If you take the y just to the side, doink, you can easily see that that is dy by dx take away 2 over x times y equals x squared sine x. After that, it's dead easy to identify p of x and q of x. p of x is whatever you're multiplying y by, and we're multiplying it here by negative 2 over x. And q of x is just the right hand side, which will be x squared sine x. From there, the next step, get the integrating factor. So the integrating factor, we find that it is e to the power of the integral of p of x, and that equals e to the power of the integral of negative 2 over x. And if we integrate negative 2 over x with respect to x, well the negative 2 will stay as it is, and really your 1 over x would go to ln x. So that gives us e to the power of negative 2 ln x. Where would you go from there, Gen Z? Help us out. 
Perfect, you can move that negative two up to the top, so you'd have e to the power of ln x to the power of negative two. And from there, you've got the exponential, you've got the log, they're both inverse, so they will cancel, leaving you with x to the power of negative two. And if you rewrite it with a positive index, that's one over x squared. Your general solution then, integrating factor times y, the integrating factor is one over x squared, or x to the power of negative two. Uh, times by y. That will equal the integrating factor times q of x, so 1 over x squared times this x squared sine x. And that is going to be dx just on the end. From there, you've got a 1 over x squared times x squared. They will cancel, leaving you with the integral of sine x. And if you integrate sine x, just remember, if you go to the side, you've got sine cos, negative sine, negative cos, differentiate, you go down, integrate, you go up. So if you differentiate sine x, you get negative cos x. And in the end, you've obviously got plus c. That is 1 over x squared y, but to get y in its own, you'd multiply by the x squared. So multiplying the left-hand side will give us y. And if we multiply this right-hand side by x squared, well, we'd have negative x squared cos x plus c. And we're also multiplying that by something in terms of x. So we'd have c x squared. Or you could just put brackets around that and have x squared times that right-hand side. And you may also wish to rewrite it, so you've got c take away cos x, so you're not starting with that negative. Doesn't matter how you write it, as long as you get down to y equals, and that there will be your answer. Try these questions in the workbook, page 92. Follow these steps to solve your first order differential equations. Best of luck. Any problems? Let me know. Bye. Woo!